While there may not be any reviews of the new Titan RTX, there are now at least some benchmark numbers out from 3 Mark to check out. So Nvidia's flagship Titan graphics card, the Titan RTX, just went on sale and that allowed many PC enthusiasts and content creators to get their hands on the beefiest prosumer aimed Turing 12 nanometer graphics card. And since its announcement, there has been no official performance data available, but with consumers getting their hands on their new ultra expensive purchase, we get to see the first performance results in the 3D Mark benchmark. The NVIDIA Titan RTX graphics card is the flagship solution for prosumers who want workstation grade performance and also want to enjoy AAA gaming titles for a bit of a premium. The Titan series has become the go-to option for users who want the best of both worlds, but you have to pay quite the large premium to get your hands on the best that NVIDIA has to offer. So before getting into those numbers, let's talk about the specs of the new Titan. The Titan RTX uses the full TU-102 GPU configuration with 6 GPCs, 36 TPCs, 72 SMs, and 4608 CUDA cores arranged within those SMs. There's also 576 Tensor cores and 72 RT cores that handle the bulk of AI, DNN, and ray tracing workloads. The clock speeds will be maintained at 1350 MHz for the base and 1770 MHz for the boost frequency. The card does feature 24GB of GDDR6 VRAM along a 384-bit bus interface that is clocked in at 7 gigabits per second or 14 gigabits per second effective clock rate. The card pumps out 672 gigabytes per second of bandwidth and additionally comes with 6 megabytes of L2 cache. Power is provided through dual 8-pin connectors with a rated board TDP of 280 watts. The card also packs in the latest display connectivity with three display ports, one HDMI, and a single USB Type-C port. Now if we talk about performance, the card rocks 16.2 teflops of FP32 compute, which is higher than the Titan V's 15 teflops compute. It also comes with 11 giga rays per second of ray tracing prowess, again, which is slightly higher than the 10 giga rays per second of the Quadro RTX 8000 solution. All of this can be yours for a premium price tag of $2,499 US, <laughs> which although lower than the $3,000 US of the previous Titan V graphics card is still twice as much as the RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition. Now, finally moving on to the performance numbers posted by Twitter user Death via video cards, we can see that the Titan RTX graphics card was fitted with a water block from Bisky that also packs a nice little LCD display such as clocks, voltages, and temperatures. The graphics card was overclocked to 2070 MHz on the core and 2025 MHz on the memory. This pushed the bandwidth to 778 gigabytes per second over the reference 672 gigabytes per second, which is a nice uplift. Running 3D Mark Firestrike, the Titan RTX reported an overall score of 31,862 and a graphic score of 41,109 points. Now this is impressive considering that a single chip based graphics card can now score well over 40,000 points. When our editor Hassan compared this to his GeForce RTX 2080 Ti overclocked score, he saw that the difference between the two cards isn't quite that big, with the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti scoring 39,958 points on an air cooler with an overclock of 2175 MHz on the core and 2025 MHz on the memory. Now there are things to note that the Titan RTX core wasn't pushed as much as the RTX 2080 Ti overclock which he used, but the Titan RTX does come with more CUDA cores than the RTX 2080 Ti. Also. He felt he could have probably squeezed slightly more juice out of it with the RTX 2080 Ti getting it past that 40,000 points. I didn't have quite so much luck with my 2080 Ti, sorry. Overall, it is a nice demonstration for the Titan RTX and hopefully we'll get to see more performance numbers in the coming days. And for those who want the best gaming performance, the GeForce RTX 2080 Ti is, well, king of the hill, giving it half the cost of the Titan RTX. Now me personally, what I thought would have been a much better showing, especially with this particular GPU, would have been maybe Time Spy or even Time Spy Extreme. Something that will really benefit from the wider bus and the wider bandwidth that this card offers by pushing those pixels past 1080p. 
pretty sure you would have found a bigger gap there. So I'd love to hear what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. This has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV, and if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you guys in the next video.